Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Develop with Java Fun Facts. Today I'm going to talk about array declarations. Let's start simple by declaring an integer array. Let's call it int array1 and assign an empty array to it. You knew that you can do that, right? Okay, let's go one step further. Let's declare an int, call it int array2 and give it array braces back here. Did you know you can do that? This expression is actually equivalent to the first one. So it may be that you used this or this style before, but how about declaring a third int array like this? Do you know what I should write here? Do you know what the type of this int array 3 variable actually is? I tell you, it's a two dimensional array. Of course, I can do this arbitrarily often, like two times here, and then let's say another four times here, and then I have a new int array of six dimensions for the sake of speed. Let me just copy that over here. It's pretty weird already, right? Okay, but actually I was just told by a colleague that you can actually do something else with square brackets in Java. Let me show you. Let's start by thinking about a simple question. There is exactly one place in Java syntax where this expression, there's some statement in here, is actually valid. There's round braces, opening, closing, square brackets, opening, closing, and curly braces, opening, one statement, and closing again. I didn't know that this is possible till the end of last week, and as I said, I only get to know about it by talking to Andreas Sebe, who himself found that out by looking into the Java language specification. Do you have an idea where this is valid syntax? i show you. Let's declare a method. Let's call it public int n. And let this one here be a return, guess what? Exactly, an integer array. By adding square brackets here behind the method declaration, we can actually add a dimension to the return type. So if we hover here, we see that the return type of the function n is actually an int array, not an int. Did you know you can do that? I didn't. And of course, you can do the same thing you can do with the error declarations before. I can add a dimension here and a dimension back there, which adds up to a two-dimensional array. This is pretty weird, eh? I don't know if that makes any sense. I know that this part here of positioning the array brackets at, uh, behind the type and behind the name is something that Java developers took over from C, but I don't know if this construct is valid in C and I'm not sure if this construct, I mean there's no methods but at least functions in C, maybe you can do something like that. I'm not sure, maybe a C developer who sees this uh, can drop a comment. Anyways, this is pretty weird syntax and I hope you guys never used it, never use it and never encounter it. But actually, this appears to be valid Java syntax, it compiles and works. Yeah, so that's it for today. This is the fun fact I wanted to share with you. I guess you learned something new like I did last week. If you have other Java fun facts similar to these or completely different, just let me know, drop me a message. Uh, I'm happy to do another episode on funny things in Java. I thank you a lot for watching. If you liked this episode, give me a thumbs up or drop me a comment. Tell me what you think. If not, uh, also drop me a comment. I'm always happy to learn. Thanks again for watching and hope to see you next time.